Hello, Sasha. Hello. Thank you very much for doing this interview with us. It's my pleasure. And uh, let me ask you a few questions. Is your investment criteria uh, the same when investing in startups in Russia and the United States? Absolutely. We believe that entrepreneurs should build global companies from day one. It means that even if the company is originated in Russia or anywhere in the former Soviet Union or in Silicon Valley, the building principles are the same. It has to be a successful global company. The foundation has to be solid. So yes, we value the companies the same. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I look at to invest in companies in uh, Skolkova startups. Skolkova is a new phenomenon in the, um, in the field of the Russian innovation ecosystem. And of course, we are watching closely the developments there. Uh, they are doing a great job selecting talented companies in various sectors, and we did look at uh, their IT cluster, um, energy cluster, we did do by the telecom, and uh, so far the companies we've seen are quite impressive, but uh, they are a bit too early stage for our fund. But we keep an eye, and at some point, absolutely, we're interested in working with companies from Skolkov. Great. Uh, what are your recommendations? I would say uh, the funds outside Russia, when they decide to enter that market, these funds self-select. They usually know by the time they make the investment decision what awaits them. And uh, uh, that's why we don't see a huge number of Silicon Valley funds uh, trying to enter the Russian market. Because there are challenges, I'm sure we've taken enough interviews where people were describing all those challenges. But if the uh, rewards are uh, worth the risks, then uh, of course the investor who wants to add a talented uh, company with Russian funds to its portfolio will find a way to work. Uh, with those companies. So my recommendation will be to be patient, uh, not get stuck on a business plan presentation because that's what uh, I would say the Russian entrepreneurs uh, are worse equipped and English is not their native language. But then try and spend some more time to get to the core because the technology usually is extremely talented. Uh, then, uh, Open your Rolodex and find good managers to add to a founding team because that's uh, usually what's missing. And uh, and then training now uh, you know your entrepreneur to think global. That's what, what my recommendation to my investment colleagues would be. That's great. Uh, what would be also like the last question? Uh, from your experience, what is the like percentage of failures around now? Failures in startups. Yes. And I would compare it to Silicon Valley, not that many. Really? Yeah, but it's because they started from the reason, <laughs> right? If you look at the, uh, all the entrepreneurs who have successful companies, they have enough scars to show you how they learn in the business. And that's the great thing we have going for us in Silicon Valley that failure is okay. You pick up and you go. Uh, the question is to see how this new Russian uh, market is developing, whether Russian entrepreneurs will have the same privilege of being allowed to make mistakes. And so far, I see uh, Russia is developing an entrepreneurial sense in going in a really good direction, because a lot of European companies do not uh, enjoy the same level of freedom uh, to make mistakes. Asia is harder. And so I see that um, the Russian entrepreneurial segment is very creative. Yes, they make mistakes, but as I said, it's pretty much a new industry. It's, you know, the venture capital industry that jump started in 2006. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, we'll see. But we love working with Russian. Thank you very much.